Thank you for joining me on this video for a walk around of the brand new 2022 HRV eHev. eHev is our hybrid system, it's a two motor system to power this really efficient vehicle. What we would like to do is take you around all around the outside of the vehicle, showing you the key features, having a little chat with you about some of the ways it's going to benefit you and your lifestyle, and then we'll end up inside the car showing you some of the features and the benefits that you're going to actually get from owning one of these vehicles. So, let's start off right at the front. So you will notice that we have um, full LED lighting on this particular vehicle. The fog lights at the bottom are LED, the daytime running lights, the dip beam, and also the main beam, which is part of our sensing suite of features, also has high beam support. So if the car notices that you're on dip beam and you're in the auto position on the lights, it can send you to main beam if the conditions are correct. And as importantly, when the conditions are not correct, it'll take you out of full beam back onto dip beam, making you even safer on the road. Now we also have the sequential LEDs for the turn indicators as well. Now underneath the bonnet, it's going to be quite familiar. If you've owned a petrol or a diesel engine before, there is going to be some technology that you'll be used to seeing under the bonnet. However, what we also have is our two motor electric hybrid system on there. So we benefit from having a really efficient petrol engine, um, which has 107 PS or horsepower, and that is there to create electricity to power a 131 PS or horsepower electric motor. So that's a really efficient way to generate electricity and then a really efficient way to drive the vehicle. I say we have a two motor system, that's because we have something that is predominantly a generator and something that is predominantly a drive motor. So this is self-charging, there is no need to plug it in. You just put regular unleaded fuel in the back of the car and you've got hundreds of miles of range to actually be driving. But of course you're going to be benefiting from the good miles per gallon and equally the low CO2 emissions as well. So we have three drive modes that the hybrid system on board can actually decide which is the most efficient at that point in time. And that's going to depending on the actual load of the vehicle and your right foot, whether you're light throttle or heavy throttle. So the three modes are EV, full EV with no tailpipe emissions whatsoever. We have hybrid and we also have engine drive. So very, very briefly, what are those different modes all about? So if we've got sufficient energy in the battery at the back of the vehicle, that can be sent to the front and it will power the drive motor to drive the road wheels. So that is a pure EV mode, absolutely brilliant. And you will see those fuel economy figures soar up when you're in EV mode. At some point, of course, the battery will deplete and you'll need to charge that up but the car takes that into consideration. It will start the petrol engine on your behalf, it will then power the generator to create electricity, and it will still be the drive motor driving the road wheels. So still being powered from that 131 PS or horsepower uh, electric motor with 253 Newton meters of torque, which is really impressive and it's gonna give a really good, powerful drive. Then there's the third mode, engine drive. This is where we lock up the engine through various shafts and counter shafts to power the road wheels. So you're going to get into this scenario when you're maybe dual carriageways and motorways at light throttle. So this is another way that we can really get good efficiency out of the, the hybrid system because we have three modes that the car can actually choose from and put us in the most appropriate. But don't worry, from a driver's point of view, get in, pop it into D mode and drive it. The car looks after everything for you. Further back from that, we have the wiper blades. Now we've taken those nice and low down so that they're hidden, maximizing your visibility at the front of the vehicle. And this model actually benefits from the wiper de-icers. So directly underneath where the wiper blades park, we have these heater elements to help the defrosting process first thing in the morning but also helps prevent them refreezing in those colder climates. Also, next to the A-pillar for the driver, we have a heater element so that when the wipers push the snow or the sleet to one side, that will also melt the snow or the slush into water to be thrown away from the vehicle as we drive off. So taking features we've seen on other vehicles in our range to the next level and improving them further for you. Another improvement we've done is make sensing our suite of safety features and some convenience features standard on all three grades. So we have one centrally mounted camera right at the top of the screen 
and that will look at things like the painted lines on the road for lane departure warning, also for road departure mitigation to help keep us safe in between those painted lines on the road. It'll look for cars, lorries and trucks when we've got adaptive cruise control on. So rather than with traditional cruise control having to set it, then lower it or increase it, this takes all that into consideration because it can see the speed of the vehicle in front of you. And we can set a safe time gap between ourselves and the vehicle in front. We're never going to exceed the speed we've set, but actually we can slow down. The car will do that on our behalf automatically based on the vehicle speed in front of us. We have collision mitigation braking system. That's our autonomous braking. But now we have a lower speed version that can recognise pedestrians and also cyclists. So we have an absolutely incredible suite of safety features within sensing. This car also benefits from blind spot information and cross traffic monitor. So we have additional radars at the back of the car to actually see if there's something in our blind spot when we're maybe changing lane on a dual carriageway or a motorway or indeed pulling out of a parking spot, it gives us that extra little bit of information to keep us safer on the road. Now that is by no means the full extent of our sensing package, but what it is, is a great introduction to it. And our dealers will be absolutely thrilled to tell you more about that system and really get to grips with it for you. Now, as we move further around, you will also notice the 18-inch wheel. Standard on all grades of HRV is this fantastic designed um, alloy wheel, which I think sets the side off incredibly nicely. So now we've seen those lovely alloy wheels, I think it's time to uh, open up that front door so we can see the interior of this particular vehicle. And you can see that we have the mix of cloth and also the synthetic leather on those high wear points. So as we're getting in and out, they're going to be more durable than cloth alone. Don't worry, we will show you more on the driver's side as we uh, work our way around there. Now if we open the back door using the, uh, the discreet little door handle just at the back, really pleased we retain that, you can see the magic seats. So they are incredibly flexible, allowing us to fold them completely flat, making really good usable space in the back. And something that I don't know of anybody else that does, but we've got tall mode for luggage. This is where we can fold the bases up on both sides with that 60-40 split and put the tall loads in there. Whether it's a bicycle, it could be golf clubs, it may be something from the DIY store. But while they're up, we can also see that in the back, we have the air vents. So rear ventilation, something we've not had before in HRV. We've also got underneath it, the USBs. So two, two and a half amp USBs for charging up those electronics while we're on the go. And potentially they could be fully charged by the time we get to where we're going. Now at the back of the vehicle, what we'll do, let's start at the, the top and work our way down. So right at the top, we have the integrated tailgate spoiler. That's to help the air efficiently leave the vehicle. So it cuts through the air really nicely at the front, but also the air leaves the vehicle really, really efficiently at the back as well. Then we have a good area of glass at the back from a rear visibility point of view, and of course the rear wiper, and then our centerpiece. We have the full LED lighting for the stop and the tail lights, and it really does set it off from an appearance point of view, but also a safety point of view, which is really, really critical. Just below that, we have the lens for our rear view camera. Now, to open the, the tailgate, we've got a couple of ways of doing it. I have the key in my pocket, so I'm going to use the, the hands-free method of opening the tailgate. And you'll see the boot space. We've got a good space inside there, and also a hidden area just below with some extra storage inside there and a new design of tonneau cover. So this means that you're very rarely going to need to take this off. The design is that it's really easy to load items into the boot, and if you've got the magic seats folded down as well, you can load those as longer items in, no problem at all. And on those odd occasions that you need to carry something up to the, the roof line of the vehicle, you just pop those off, four of those little clips, and stow that inside the vehicle. Now when it comes to closing the tailgate, I can press this button here and it will instantly start to, uh, to lower. Really, really useful because you can press the button and then you, you'll be away once you've loaded things in. But my favorite way of closing it is the walk away feature. I press the button there, it goes green. 
Now, I can be taking things out of the boot, but it's not going to close until I actually walk away from the vehicle, making it really, really easy to, to live with and making it really, really convenient because I'm now away from the vehicle and it's locked it. But remember, you must have the key on your person, whether it's in a bag or a pocket, for that feature to work. So now as we make our way to the driver's side and we'll get you, uh, you inside in a moment to have a little look at that. We know the car's unlocked because we've already opened some of the doors, but it is worthwhile having a little chat about the keyless access system. So currently the car is unlocked, but we can lock it using the little button at the top and it will wind in the door mirrors for us. Um, but we could also use the, the keyless part of this as well. So as long as I have the key in the detection zone, um, I can put my hand in behind the door handle here and it'll unlock for me. And now we can get in. And of course, when it comes to locking it, we just put a little bit of pressure on these three ridges at the top of the door handle and we can check it's all locked up nicely for us. So on that note, I think what we should do is get you inside. Come and have a look at this. Okay, so now we're inside the car and you're in the, uh, the driving seat, let's take a look at some of the features inside the cabin. So working our way from the, the top down, we've got our frameless rear view mirror to really maximise the amount of uh, rear visibility you're going to get with minimising the amount of intrusion for the mirror itself. And it's also self-dimming, so the chances of having that unwanted glare of a night time are greatly reduced. Then as we move our way down, you'll find the infotainment screen. Now on here, there's a vast array of apps that are going to make your uh, driving of this vehicle much more enjoyable and much more easy to use as well. One of my favorite features on here is the fact that my iPhone is now wirelessly connected. So if I use my Apple CarPlay wirelessly connecting from my phone down here, I can use my uh, Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze. It can read out my unread text messages or WhatsApp messages, keeping me nice and safe on the road. And of course, I've got things like the factory navigation and I've got my owner's manual on there. And of course, my audio settings as well. Moving down from there, we have our heating controls. So this is where we can make sure that both the driver, the passenger, and now also the rear seat passengers can have exactly the right temperature. So we have an array of buttons and dials to get the, exactly the right temperature, coming through exactly the right vents, and we also have the rear ventilation that we saw earlier as well, to make sure people in the back are really, really comfortable. Now on the outside edges, both for the driver and for the passenger, we have our air diffusion system. This is where we'll get subtle air that will benefit me as a passenger, yourself as a driver, and it'll go past my shoulders into the rear of the car as well really complementing the, the rear ventilation low down with this air diffusion system. Now you're not going to feel a big jet force of air, the idea is it's subtle, you just really benefit from that exact temperature that you've selected on the controls down here. Now what we also have is a shift lever just down here, nice and easy, so we've got our park, reverse, neutral and drive, and if you want to um, have a more traditional feel to the drive, you can pop it in B mode, B is for brake, where the car actually gives a, a synthetic feeling of engine braking, but rather than wasting the energy like you would do in a traditional car, because this is a hybrid, we use the electric motors to harness that energy and store it in the batteries at the back to be used at a later time. Below there, we have our drive modes, so we can go from a, a sporty to an eco drive, so it either sharpens or softens the, uh, the throttle response to make sure you've got exactly the kind of drive that you want. Remember, the hybrid system will always dictate what is the most efficient way to drive the power, but you can actually um, adjust it so that you've got the sharper or the softer throttle response. Below that, we have hill descent control. This is where the car can actually help you descend a hill. So we're talking about quite steep slopes at lower speeds. So if I didn't have that feature and I'm going down a hill, all I can do is use more or less brake. But if there's an unintended sideways movement as I'm coming down the hill, I can't really do much about that. I can try and correct it, but I potentially could get that wrong. With hill descent control, it uses the yaw angle sensor on the car, and it knows if there's an unintentional sideways movement, and it can control that because it can apply brakes to all four wheels independently. So that could be an absolutely invaluable feature, depending on your situation. Just behind that is the parking brake. So it's electronic, it frees up loads of space for us, and it's really easy to put on and also take off. 
Now you can program it if you wish, or we can do that for you, that it will automatically apply the parking brake when you power the car off, or it needn't. The, the choice is yours, we can tailor that for you. One of my favourite features in this particular section here is brake hold. So now it remembers how you've used it the last time. So brake hold is a function where you're driving along and you use the brakes to come to a standstill at maybe a set of traffic lights or a, or a junction, and the car will hold the pressure on to the brakes. So you're not going to move, you don't need to apply the parking brake, the car is holding the brakes on for you. I love that. Now historically you had to pop that on every time you got into the vehicle, now it remembers. So if I've turned it on, but then powered the vehicle off, next time I pound the vehicle on, actually brake hold is all ready and good for me to go again. Absolutely brilliant. So now we've had a good look around the vehicle, I think you'll agree, it is jam-packed full of features that are going to benefit you when you're driving this vehicle and will enrich our driving lives. So this vehicle is very, very important to us. It is the, one of the final steps in our plan to have our mainstream range electrified by 2022. We hope that we've answered some questions that you may have had about the brand new HRV eHev. Of course, if you have any more questions, please contact your local dealer who'll be delighted to tell you more. Thanks very much for watching.